because this is a video about Makima, let's just get this all out of our system right now, okay? Exhibit please A. Step on me, please, please. Just one chance. I need one chance. Makima, please, please, one chance. Very good. Exhibit B. I need this. Please, please step on me. Right please. Just I just one want chance. one chance for her to step on me. Please, 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 Makima, just one chance. Perfect. And exhibit C. I will literally mommy? offer sorry, you mommy? anything. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry, mommy. I need just sorry, one chance. Mommy? Sorry, Makima, please, just one chance. Step on me, please. All right, cool. Let's actually get started now, okay? From start to finish, Makima has always been a character shrouded in mystery, with many readers and watchers questioning her real motives and goals. Her mysterious nature and formidable abilities make her one of the most compelling figures in this new era of anime. In the beginning of the series, she's introduced as the strong and powerful teacher stereotype you see in most shonen anime and manga. A character with a mysterious past and is extremely powerful when necessary. But as the story unfolds, her role in the story starts to change from a benefactor to a character that the audience starts to question given her problematic actions. And as these problematic actions start to build up, it's finally paid off with reveal as the control devil. Aside from some of her <clears throat> assets, Makima's role as an antagonist has been one of my favorites in recent years, being first portrayed as a protagonist then slowly revealing her role as the big bad of part 1. Excluding the slow buildup and reveal of her character and true intentions, what I love most about Makima is her consistency. From beginning to end, although her motives may seem contradictory to a devil's nature on the surface level, still acts exactly the same as every other devil we are shown, regardless of how much more intelligent or strong she is compared to them. So today, I really wanted to dive into her character and attempt to look at her in a deeper level. But anyways, let's get started. Makimasa! Makimasa! Daisuke! Daisuke! I love you! I love you! Makima! Makima! Ma! Let's first lay the groundwork of the idea that I'll be referring back to for most of this video, which is Makima's innate nature as a devil. And to make sure you guys really pay attention, I'm gonna put a little bit of Subway Surfers or Brain Raw on the side here. Cool transition! Hopefully it's just not an animation going from side to side. Alright, thank you, Lemoyne. For the majority of the devils we see in the series, most of their main motives are there to purely kill and antagonize humans, with most devils being aware of their lack of empathy for humans and their suffering. And while there are some outliers like Power and the rest of the fiends in the Special Division, I feel that isn't really the case. Starting off with Power. For the majority of the show, it was hinted that Power was only being influenced by Makima, ordering her to stay friends with Denji just so Power was able to fabricate the idea of her being a little sister to him. And slowly but surely, this does start to happen whether it be because of Makima's influence or not. Some people may perceive this as her slowly but surely being able to coexist with humanity. But what she's more friendly to is not humanity as a whole, but only Denji and Aki. The only reason why she has the relationship with those two characters in the first place is because of how close they are for the majority of the series. And she acknowledges this in her last moments in part 1, stating that all life is equally as unimportant, questioning why she disobeyed Makima's orders, and finally reaching the conclusion and realization that Denji is her very first friend. Again, she may seem like a friendly devil, but in reality she's only friendly to Denji and maybe Aki. I'm only saying maybe because it wasn't specifically stated, but it's clear that all three characters have some sort of close relationship. As for the fiends, we don't know too much about their psyche compared to power just because of their screen time in the series. But I feel like it's safe to say that most of their actions were also heavily regulated by Makima, similar to power. In short, we can conclude that devils still aren't able to truly coexist with humans, but instead with the idea of a certain person. And while you can relate this to a certain crayon eating gremlin, we'll get to that section a little bit later in the video. Alright, cool. Subway Surfers, away! Cool editing, thank you editing Lemoyne for not making it just boring in the slideshow. <laughs> From my understanding, she has two goals. The first one being to create a world without suffering, and the second one to create a family or an equal of some kind. On the surface, her goals may seem pretty contradictory to her instincts as the control devil, but if we look a little further, you could start to realize that she's still following it to some extent. Let's first take a look at her goal of creating a world without suffering. While on the surface this objective is a noble pursuit, what Denji brings up should still be put into consideration. If every single day of your life was perfect, it would eventually become normal. One could truly only have good experiences once they have experienced bad. It's kind of similar to The Good Place, when the main characters in that show finally get to essentially paradise, a place where you could have essentially anything you want without consequence, they start to realize that it wasn't the place it was hyped up to be. Because every day was essentially perfect, they had basically no purpose in life, and the brains of the current residents of the good place was eventually melted into mush due to not having any hardships. This is the exact problem! On paper, this is paradise. 
all your desires and needs are met. And every second of my existence was amazing, but my brain became this big, dumb blob. Because there's no reason to do anything at all, they basically lost all purpose in life without a need to do anything at all. And it's this world that Makima is striving for. Whether it be because of her narrow-minded ideals, we should realize that her goal of making a world without suffering would eventually destroy humanity in the process. And it's this idea when you start realizing that Makima really is just still following her devil instincts of antagonizing humanity. Next, let's take a look at her second goal of creating family or an equal. Whether it be because of her upbringing during her first reincarnation as Makima, or from her innate nature as a devil, the reason why she cannot consider any human an equal is because in her eyes, every single human is only considered a dog, beings or creatures lower than her. One of the only entities she considers superior or on equal grounds with is Pochita. And in order to achieve her first goal, wants to beat Pochita in a battle so she's able to perceive herself as superior and to use his power to erase suffering from the world. And from a first listen, that might sound pretty confusing, because it is. Almost all of it contradicts her goal of wanting to find an equal. Although looking for one, tries to dominate and perceive herself as more powerful than one of the few entities she considers powerful to create a world without suffering. And while there hasn't been anything in the manga that specifically states that devils are incapable of working together, it does connect with her nature of the specific devil that she is. Which brings me to my next topic. Aiden Ross. There's not a Fortnite player who doesn't know his name. With a, <laughs> with a Mr. Beast collab, he gave 50 Apple Visions to the homeless. He never ends a 1v1 on a loss and never leaves his duo alone. Are you with me, Beta Nation? This isn't a zero build lobby we're glazing right now. I'm talking about the man who always cranks 90s, no matter how many times he hits the witty. Aiden Ross. As a control devil, her powers to dominate others extends beyond supernatural abilities. Deeply rooted in her psychological manipulation, she meticulously crafts an image of trustworthiness using her charisma, appearance, most definitely her appearance. Oh, mama. <laughs> she meticulously crafts an image of trustworthiness using her charisma, appearance, and perceived kindness that draws individuals into her orbit, making them susceptible to her influence. Why did I, why did I, why did I write the script like this? Her relationships, such as the one with Denji, are marked by a careful balance of affection and control, exploiting emotional vulnerabilities to bind them to her will. This duality of nurturing facade and ruthless control underscores themes of autonomy and subjugation, positioning Makima as a powerful symbol of fear and control. This meticulous manipulation, psychological exploitation, and direct control with the use of her power or contracts are her main methods of achieving her goals. Not only that, but her methods still directly connect to her nature as THE control devil. The road to get there led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and the suffering of many, which again directly connects with her devil instincts. Not only that, but her methods also relate to her need for control, basically puppeteering and controlling almost every single major action that was taking place in part 1. And while you could argue that the ends justify the means, let me remind you that this end would have quite literally ENDED humanity, not save it. Now for her second goal of finding an equal. Even though she wants an equal, still tries to control one of the few entities she considers more powerful or on the same grounds as. No matter how much she idolizes Pochita, still can't help but reach a conclusion that they have to take control over them. Every single noble action that she does or attempts still leads to the destruction of humanity and her instincts as a control devil. And even her methods to get to this perfect world leads to the suffering of thousands and the control of many. It's this consistency that I absolutely love about Makima's character. Again, on the surface level, it may seem like she's different from the rest, but in reality, she's just doing what all devils do. No matter how special or all-powerful she may seem in the show, she's still a devil, doing what devils do best, but in a more grander way. Now, you may have noticed I've been neglecting a little crayon-eating gremlin for the majority of this video, and you could argue that her existence could contradict some of the points I mentioned in this video. But, say it with me class, it's, it's the opposite. opposite. Great, now let me explain. There's no point gooning around, we'll only be rizzed up by baby Gronk. Queue up with your duo, on the double! Just like her former self, Nayuta is also shrouded in mystery for most of her screen time, but it isn't until chapter 155 where we truly see her intentions. In this chapter, we see her questioning who she really is, going into the mind of Denji and remembering everything she did and her goals as Makima, and finally decides to follow up on those original goals. But slowly and surely, these goals start to go in the back burner, with her becoming more selfish and living out the life she always wanted, finally having an equal. And while this may seem like Denji was finally able to tame Nayuta, finally being able to coexist with humanity, Nayuta is still not able to truly neglect her devil instincts, still wanting to be on the side of devils, 
What stops her isn't her empathy for humanity, but her personal desire for Denji. I think it's safe to say that Nayuta is on the same boat as Power. Power isn't able to coexist with humanity, but with the idea of something or someone. Nayuta is the same way. She could care less about the other humans in the show. What she cares about is her own personal wants and desires of wanting an equal. With all of that in mind, it would be ill faith to say that Denji had no influence on Nayuta's decision. In fact, I feel like this is one of the few things in the series where Denji actually mattered. This is um, <clears throat> a callback to a video I made a while back. For what we are given right now, it's clear that Nayuta still has some grasp of her devil nature and has selfish goals just like her former self. But the major difference between Makima and Nayuta is their initial influence. Near the end of part 1, it's implied that Makima never had a figure to look up to, immediately being taken under the wing of the government after being reincarnated onto Earth for the first time. And I'm sure you can see why this could be a problem, especially for the control devil. However, with Nayuta, she was immediately put under the care of Denji right after being reincarnated, which is undeniably a better influence on her. But even with this change of influence as a younger devil, she still has the nature of one. So why do they feel so different? What feels different is their change of priorities. Because of Makima's initial upbringing, her devil nature overpowered her personal desires of wanting an equal. With Nayuta, these priorities flipped, with her putting more importance to her personal desires rather than her instincts as a devil. And regardless of what she prioritizes, is still consistent with her character. Again, it's this consistency that I absolutely adore about Makima and Nayuta. Even with her reincarnation, still acts exactly the same, but just has different priorities given Denji's influence. I like King Sagyat. 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 Makima is hot. Sorry, let me do that. Makima is interesting. But no matter how she looks, no matter how she acts, or no matter what her actions are. You have to remember that what she is, is a devil at heart. Devils in this show are specifically there to antagonize humanity. But what these devils also have are desires that tend to fit their innate fear. The war devil Yoru wants humanity to remember war, and the control devil has the innate instinct to take control of people. But what's intriguing is that these desires that the devils have don't always have to be antagonistic, sometimes being more selfish than destructive. And Makima is a clear example of that. While at first her means of trying to find an equal was destructive, after being reincarnated was able to do it in a more passive way, being close to Pachita and finally having someone they could consider an equal. But regardless, still stays consistent with her nature of being a devil. And the more I think about it, the idea of devils having more selfish desires seems so in line with the idea of actual devils. Being greedy, trying to get to it regardless of the consequences and the people around them, and never letting go once they actually achieve it. It's this desire, this greed, this consistency that I believe makes Makima an amazing character. But anyways guys, that's the end of the video. As per usual, I'll leave some clips in the show. I actually have like a top 20. Do not over excessive There's no skippy twin Riz Ohio. Yeah, Riz, I should say. Say that every time. Exactly. You guys go like, I'm gonna goon! I don't know what the kids say these days. I don't know what the kids say these I'm not informed about it. They're for sure. I don't know how they sound, I'll be honest. Who won? I won! <laughs> oh, there's someone in here with an extra wheel. Yo! Nice. I predicted the fuck out of that. Holy shit, I've good ears. Lots? Wait, lots? Lots? Wait, what's friction to lots? That's crazy. Anyways, um, like kind of body. <laughs> uh, I have. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> If you are, I recommend this into- never mind. I'm just gonna stop there before um, I say something I would regret to the matter. Are you ill? No, I saw a, a green motherfucker on the left. Did you not see that? Okay, I, I guess I'm going crazy then. Oh, it's right there! Look behind you! Oh, damn it. Oh, this guy's blind as a bat.